Because you get up in that airplane, get in a storm, don't know what to do. You're in a mess. If you got anybody on board, they're in a mess too. We got to be led. We got to know how to be led by the Spirit. We got to know how to communicate, not only with God, but with one another through the Spirit of God. We got to know each other. We got to know our enemies. We got to know our brothers and sisters. And you ain't going to know it by the corner of mind, but trying to figure it out. You got to know it by the Spirit. You got to know it by the Spirit. But being a hearer and not a doer is a waste of time. You're wasting the good word of God. See, both of these men heard the same message. It could have actually, actually, they could have been sitting side by side. One heard it, built that house. See, all this is spiritually. This ain't naturally. Ain't nobody gonna see you out there naturally digging a hole with a shovel. But you're putting into action the word of God. You're building your house on the rock. You're building your house on the word of God and by the word of God. Folks, it's, it's been the word. It's still the word. And it always remains being the word of God. And if we abandon this book, we'll fall. And that's what's happened to this generation. It's abandoned this. That's right. What this says is right. And if you don't build your house on this, you will surely fall. I warn you and tell you before it happens, if you don't build your house on this, you will go down in the end right. with the Antichrist because you'll be part of his kingdom. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Lord, help us. Not just to be a hearer, but a doer. You know, life is so busy. So if you ain't careful, you're going to hear the word, and you leave the church, you ain't got time to do. You ain't got time to put it into action. What he's telling you, you need to do. Life is so busy. That's why Jesus told us up front, if any man comes after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me daily. If he seeks to save your life, he said you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, Jesus said, then you're going to find it. There's a price to pay. There's a price to pay to follow Jesus. And to manifest Jesus. And to obey God. But I've learned in the last little while, this is the most precious thing. Don't ever let this get away from me. I got a little pamphlet that somebody wrote and told me, wrote me down something about the cell phone. Said if you treat your Bible like you do your cell phone. I'll read it to you if I got time. Some of you may have heard it. Oh, what they said, you'd really, really take care of it. That's right. You'd really watch over it. That's right. You dropped it in the water, you go buy a new one. Y'all quiet, ain't you? Come on. But you know, this technology, this modern day technology, is rob people. This old Facebook and all this uh, is robbing people. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. And you can drive down the road and see four or five people in the car. You see four or five lights sticking up there. Kids don't even play in the yard anymore. They tied up on some kind of game, and most of the more games is from hell. And these little kids need a cell phone like they need a hole in the head. Amen. Amen. You may think that they don't know how to run them things. They can run them better than you can. 
They can turn them inside out and upside down and get everything in there that's on there and more besides. Because it's just that generation. It's a generation we're living in. A modern technology. Now, all that the church is modern is turn technology. Computers. You know, I like some people read the Bible off the cell phone. Don't read the Bible. I like to read my Bible. I'm staying with my Bible. I'm not giving up my Bible. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Cell phones took place about everything. Some of the worst gossip you ever read on Facebook. Everybody tells everybody's business and theirs too. Ain't nobody got no business knowing when you're going to the bathroom or to the dollar store when you're laying down or sweeping the floor. Who wants to know that? I'm talking about God's people too. Surely we could use it for something better than that. Surely we could put a script on it. If we just, if we just got to use it, we could put for God so love the world. He gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. If we don't eat, we'll die. See, that's what people, they, get, they come to church a lot of time, they go home, that's what they do. They stay on Facebook. They stay on computers. They don't put to action that word of God. Amen. We got to live what's preached to us. We got to believe and live what we read. And you know what? It's a 24-hour day job. You got to sell out to follow Jesus. You know what he said? If any man come back to me and forsake it, not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. That still says that. And it still says, Hebrews 12 and 14, follow peace with all men and holiness without, which no man shall see the Lord. It's still right. Holiness is still right. It don't matter how many have abandoned the word of God, abandoned holiness, It's still right. I told him, I said, you put this book, Bible, and put it in the shuttle and take it to the moon. Bring it back and open it up and still reads the same. You put it in the freezer and freeze it for six months. Get out and throw it up and still reads the same. You take it to the bottom of the ocean, put it up, and it still reads the same. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. He's the same. You know, just because of the battle, just because of the great falling away, don't, don't mean that God's fell away. It don't mean the Bible's fell away. If you can believe this, it still works. If I can believe, he said, all things are possible unto everyone that believes. Thank you, Jesus. But if a person in the natural don't eat, he dies. And that's what's happened to the modern church world. And you know, you got to be fed the word, but the word also has got to be anointed before it can feed your spirit, man. I said, you got to have the real anointing before it can feed a real child of God. That's why you turn on TV or radio or whatever. You can't find nobody worth listening to anymore. Used to on the radio, you could just turn one preacher after the other. We're on fire for God. Late at night, you could pick up the preachers from old stations. One after the other. This day and time, that's, that's over with. You turn it on, you got deadheads on there. They say they're preachers, but they ain't no fire no more. I said there ain't no fire no more. No power, no Holy Ghost power. But the power is the same. If you want it more than anything else. I 
I said the Holy Ghost is the same. And we're coming into an hour that a Holy Ghost revival is coming. But you know what? We, we got to be we got to be in it. We got to be seeking God. He ain't just going to come to you because you go to church. There's a lot of folks went to church in the Zuzu Street. But you know where it started? In a house. Moved to another house. And to a little 20 20 building. Because the churches shut it out. Padlocked the churches. And then when it broke out, they jumped in and wanted to act like they was a part of it all the while. But God would slay them. He wouldn't allow them to come in to what he was doing in the flesh. We got to be hungry for it. It's time to get hungry. Matthew 5 said, Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. For they shall be filled. Thank you, Jesus. I can sense, I can sense a hunger. I can sense a hunger taking a hold of a few people. And him it was just a few in the Zuzu Street. It was just a few. The action started in Los Angeles in a basement, a janitor by the name of Brother Lee in a basement. He'd turn aside and pray for hours. It actually started up in Topeka, Kansas in 1900 at a college. And you know where it started? They had a prayer towel. And they prayed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, three hour shifts. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, three hour shifts apiece. God saw that hunger. You know what he did? He started bringing a, he, he started bringing a deeper hunger. He knows it takes God to bring a deeper hunger. It takes God to give you that deeper hunger. That appetite for more of God. You're not just satisfied with just church. Two songs in the testimony. In a 15 minute sermon. You're hungry for the power of God. You're hungry to see America turn back to God. You're hungry to see the churches on fire again. Shouting the victory, casting out devils, healing the sick, raising the dead. It's still Bible. They ever did me that much? In Los Angeles, well it went on to Galveston, then to Houston, and that's where Brother Seymour they sent for him in Los Angeles and got out there. He preached one message. Preached one message. They padlocked the church. He had no money to get back to Houston. Nowhere to stay. And Brother Lee had mercy on him, took him home. He didn't even know at that time whether he was right either. But he was hungry for God. God had it all set up. God had it all planned. How many of God got this thing planned out? I just want to fit in this plan. What about you? I said, God got it planned out. I just want to be diligent enough, praise God, hungry enough to fit in God's plan. There's a revival coming to America. Sure as these lights are burning. There's a fire has already been lit. Hallelujah. I said, there's a fire already been lit. If you don't have the hunger you need, you need to start praying, God, stir the hunger in my heart again. Serve me to pray, Lord. Stir the hunger in my heart again. Stir the desire in my heart to work for God and to do something for God and to see a Holy Ghost revive. You know, I remember everybody's vision used to be revival. 
They invoked her so they shout for hours. The more revival songs. And it was like people's vision died out for revival. Thank you, Jesus. How many of those times it gets stirred up? Get that vision back. For something to happen in America. Ain't nothing gonna help us but a revival, folks. It's gonna take a Holy Ghost revival to turn this nation around. We're in too big of a mess. It's gonna take God. I said it's gonna take a Holy Ghost revival. You know, England, England came to ruins one time. And 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 uh, the writers didn't want to write what really turned England around, but they had to write before it was over. It was revivals of John Wesley that turned England around and saved it from ruins. And the same thing happened to America. And they didn't want to write about that either, but they had to write that it was revivals of Jonathan Edwards that saved America from going down to nothing. Men possessed by our enemies. God saved America, saved England by revivals. By revivals breaking out and people repenting and turning to God. And those, that's what changed God's mind from Nineveh. People repented of their sins. <laughs> people repented and the Bible said God repented. When he saw Nineveh, sent Jonah over there, had a time getting Jonah there, but he finally got him there. You know the story. And when he got him there, when that old fish spit him out, the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. He was ready to preach now. He knows God can get you right to preach if he wants to. He knows he's still got a whale's belly. He'll take you down to the bottom and hold you there till you pray through. Amen. When Jonah got to praying and getting a hold of God, he prayed through and God spoke to the fish. And he spit him out and he went a day's journey. Word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. He went a day's journey in the city. He said, yet in 40 days, none of us shall be destroyed. The king pulled off his crown, his robe, humbled himself and said, maybe God will have mercy on us. Maybe God won't destroy us. And he saw their works. He saw their humility. And the Bible said God repented of the evil he thought to do to none of them. And he did it not. Humbled himself and prayed and saved them from destruction. Hallelujah. Humble ourselves and pray tonight, folks, can save us. We are headed as a nation to destruction. Just look around you. Just look around you. We headed down the hill so fast. I said we headed down the hill so fast. When a sodomite spirit begins to take over a nation, you know, you know what happened to Rome, Greece. First thing, the spirit of sports took it over. And then the spirit of homosexual took it over. Same thing happened to America. Spirit of sports took America over. You hear me? Spirit of sports took America over. There's no room to hold the people to go to ball games. You say half a dozen cars at church. But they come from cross country. They used to come cross country for revivals. They used to drive cross country. Now they're driving cross country for ball games. They're hungry, all right, but they're hungry for passion. It's like the days of Noah and the days of Sodom. Right in America. It's against the law to tell folks it's wrong for two men to get married or two women to get married. It's against the law to tell them it's abomination. And most states is folding up to it down in Alabama. They're fighting it. Where we from? The judge is fighting it. And he's sticking his head out on the limb. We've been praying for him. Judge Moore. Same one that kicked out of office before because he wouldn't take his Ten Commandments off the wall. It wasn't, it was the government. It wasn't the people because the people turned around and put him right back in. 
Chief Justice. Come on. And now he he defied the federal judge's law and, and sent an order out to all his probate judges, do not marry two men or two women. He's having his life. God don't have mercy on him. He probably wound up in prison. But right now it's on hold. Thank you. Somebody's got to stand. Everybody can't fold. You know the poor prince has done folded up. I said most of the poor, probably 98% of the poor pits have already folded up. And they, 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 they're political correct. What they're doing is preaching a message. Just like our government, our poor, weak government. Political correct. Can't even call terrorists terrorists. Can't even call the enemy the enemy. You know why? Because he's one of them. He's a Muslim himself. He's for the downfall of this country. Yes, 